Welcome back. A story out of the Wausau area in August shocked many this year. A young farmer poisoned by gases in his outdoor manure pit. The unusual circumstances of his death has his family doing what they can to make sure this doesn't happen again. Jessica Arp has the story tonight from Amherst. It's the nature of farm life. There's just always something to do. Corn to haul, bulk tanks to check, cattle to feed, manure to move. Bob Beatis shared all of those with his son, Mike. Him and I work day by day, side by side. And a lot of people have said this before this happened. We had a unique uh, thing going. We usually you talk to most farmers, father and sons, it's like gas and matches. They don't always mix. Mike and Bob mix just fine. The younger enthusiastic about farming, the older glad to see a third generation taking hold of the beef and custom harvesting operation. It was, though, mixing and gas and one of those routine tasks that would stop a farming future in its tracks. Then he said he was getting up at 3 o'clock to start the tractor up to start the agitation process. Early in the morning on August 15th, Mike Biotish went to the outdoor manure pit to mix the liquids and solids to be pumped out and hauled away. And at 4 o'clock in the morning, he, he sent a Snapchat to some of, some of his friends how he was stirring up the pot of gold. The gold is the good nutrient value of the manure. That early morning, the air was completely still with no measurable breeze, a film of fog in the air. The agitator stirred up naturally occurring gases in the decomposing manure, invisible to Mike as he worked, settling just above the liquid he was mixing. Walked down this embankment about five feet in, in elevation, probably was a three foot drop in elevation. That's where he got overcome. A hired hand around 6 a.m. noticed the truck running and no one in it. I was in the house just having a cup of coffee and he, he called me and says, Mike's dead. Uh, oh my God. Mike and 16 of their beef steers died from acute exposure to hydrogen sulfide gas. It has been a danger typically for those around manure in enclosed spaces, not outdoor pits. We always talk about safety and everything here. It wasn't like he didn't, didn't know what he was doing, you know, and it just felt like the world stopped turning. <sighs> The incident has gotten the attention of other farmers and the ag industry in the state. And now I got customer haulers and stuff like that. They're all scared because they don't know this is a silent killer. How do you know? You know, unfortunately, it's usually after someone's death that the awareness gets greater and people are willing to take action. Cheryl Skolas with UW Extension has been researching what happened. It's concerning to people. We've, we've been responding to a lot of inquiries, not understanding the gases. And like you said, the open air part of it was really a, a different factor. An online webinar done in the weeks after Mike's death aimed to educate on why using a gas meter might very well prevent another death. That one breath can be enough that it, it can take your life and it's easier to use that monitor, put in some extra safety precautions than to lose a loved one. That gas meter costing anywhere from 200 to $2,000. This actually has five sensors in it. Can be used to detect the gas and alert when levels are dangerous, as little as one part per million. When it does alarm, you need to get out into fresh air. It's a precaution she says only some farmers are taking, but she's hoping now more will. Our best way to help, you know, um, remember Michael is, is to take action, not just talk about it. That's exactly what the Biotish family is doing. They've started a memorial fund that will go to promoting education around safe manure handling on farms. Michael always said, help everybody else out. You know, that's how I was. You know, if I can help somebody else, some other family from this ever happening, I did my job. Living a mission that Mike had emblazoned on the family farm signs five years ago. Now a daily reminder of the need to look past those routine tasks and at life's bigger picture. He picked up this saying, it was live today like you're going to die tomorrow, but farm like you're going to farm forever. And you know, that phrase really didn't mean a whole lot at the start, but now... After this happened, how true it is. In Amherst, Jessica Arp, WISC News 3. Farmers can go watch that full UW Extension webinar. We will have a link to it on channel3000.com. We also want to mention you can donate to the Mike Viotish Safety Memorial through their GoFundMe page. We'll link to that, or you can donate directly to the Community First Bank 
in Stevens Point. More at channel3000.com, of course.